welcome to the color page lesson. You have gone through a lot to get to this point. Congratulations. In this lesson, we're going to go through settings and our preferences in our project, and then we're going to go over the color page layout in detail. Let's do it. The first thing we're going to do is go to Resolve Preferences. Command comma if you're on Mac, and then under System, General. First, let's put a check mark and use 10-bit precision in Viewers. In the second option, use Mac Display Color Profiles for Viewers. What is this? This is basically asking, do you want to use the color profiles that your computer is using for your display for the DaVinci Resolve viewers? These are the color viewers, okay? So if I say yes to this, it means what I'm using for my display, which is in system preferences or system settings, depending on your version, then displays, display settings. Okay, here, presets. So my laptop is using this preset. My BenQ is using this. So if I say use Mac Display Color Profiles for Viewers, it's going to try to use what my computer's using for the viewers here, okay? Now I can't stress enough, the best way to do this is to hook up an external calibrated display to Blackmagic Design Hardware and bypass your GPU, which I talk about in detail in another lesson. And then even if you're not doing that, creating a 3D LUT file to use for your color viewers is also something that you should look at. But that's what this setting's about. I'm leaving it unchecked on my computer. And the next thing I want checked is automatically tag Rec. 709 Scene Clips as Rec. 709-A. Make sure that's checked. And now let's go to User, Playback Settings. I would check both of these things, which is just going to disable some sort of cosmetic things in Resolve during playback, things like that, to help your system run a little better. And with this stuff set, we can click Save. We can also go up here to the three dots go to your preferences that you've created before, and update preset, and save. Okay, now let's jump into our project settings. Go to Color Management, and let's start at the top. We've done some of this already, but I just want to go over it again, especially now that you know a little bit more about color spaces. All of this is going to make more sense. So for Color Science, instead of the default DaVinci YRGB, we're on DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. And by the way, YRGB, Y stands for luminance, and then RGB is red, green, blue. Changing this to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed puts us in a Color Managed project workflow, which is what we're doing. And we'll talk about this later, but you can also do that instead with CSTs, Color Space Transforms. But again, for right now, let's just put this as a DaVinci YRGB Color Managed project. Next, Color Processing Mode is Custom. Input Color Space. If you're using a Blackmagic Design camera, like the Pocket 4K, Cinema Camera 6K, etc., you want this to be Blackmagic Design Film, Gen 5, or whatever the latest is. If you don't shoot on Blackmagic Design cameras, you're going to need to set this to whatever color space your camera is shooting in. And if you don't know how to figure that out, I mean, just look up your camera, and you should be able to find that at the manufacturer site. But you can also do this. I'm going to cancel out for a second. Go to the Media page. And then on the media page, you want to select one of your clips. And then over here on the right, hit the down arrow and choose Tech Details. And look at Color Space Notes. And this might give you some type of hint as to what you should be choosing. So back in Project Settings, Timeline Color Space. So this is where we tell Resolve that we want to grade in DaVinci Wide Gamut. So DaVinci WG slash Intermediate. Timeline Working Luminance, just leave that at HDR 1000. Output Color Space, and so this is where we tell Resolve, okay, we're going to be grading in DaVinci Wide Gamut, but we want to monitor in Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. In the Limit Output Gamut 2, you want Output Color Space. And then Input DRT, Output DRT, this stands for Display Render Transform, and it has to do with the tone mapping of your footage. For now, leave this at DaVinci for both input and output. And then this other stuff, just leave at the defaults. Now let's scroll down to Lookup Tables. And you want 3D Lookup Table Interpolation to Tetrahedral. And then Color Viewer Lookup Table and Scopes Lookup Table should be No LUT Selected. And you may notice I have a LUT specified for my Video Monitor Lookup Table. This is what we cover in another lesson, so yours will probably just say No LUT Selected right now. Now let's jump over to Camera Raw up on the left. And if you're using B-RAW, Blackmagic RAW files, DaVinci Resolve will automatically see that info. So even if you left it at this, it's not going to change anything. But I'm going to set mine to Blackmagic RAW. Decode quality is full res. Decode using camera metadata. And with that, before we click Save, I'm going to go to my menu and update my preset. And now click Save. So to be clear, we're starting with a camera color space. And then we're bringing that into DaVinci Wide Gamut, another color space. 
and then we're outputting to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. So what we're doing is we're taking the color science of a camera, like what the camera actually saw, and we're graciously bringing that into another color space, which is DaVinci Wide Gamut, and it's a larger color space than what our camera has, okay? And so when we do all this, and we have a color managed project, you'll see that our footage comes to life, right? Instead of that desaturated look that we had before. Now, you could manually do this, but colorists use color managed projects. It's easier with a few clicks of the mouse. Your footage is where it needs to be, and then we grade from there. Okay, back in the color page, we need to go to Workspace, Reset UI Layout. Now you should see a screen very similar to mine. So I'm gonna start at the top left and we're just gonna go through this quickly. I'm only gonna give you details you need to know right now because we're gonna dive into the details and all these tools during the color grading lessons. But at the top left, we've got some options that are different from the edit page. Gallery, LUTs, and of course Media Pool, which we're used to and then Clips controls this strip right here. We can turn that on and off, and we can also choose what is displayed. And by the way, anything like Gallery that doesn't make sense, that you've not heard of before, we're gonna get into all that. I don't wanna give you extra information quite yet, okay? I'm gonna turn Gallery off for the moment, which will just give me more space for my viewer. Drag this over. And then up on the right, we've got Quick Export, which I don't use. I'm typically just going to the Deliver page, but that's here. Timeline, Nodes, Effects, and Lightbox. These are all new, right? And they all have different purposes. You're gonna use the Lightbox for certain things. You're gonna use your Node Tree for certain things, etc. Again, don't be overwhelmed. It's all gonna make sense. So let me drop back to the left. For our viewer here, we can set the size. And if you ever accidentally zoom with your mouse, something like that, if you hit Shift Z on your keyboard, it'll set it back to fit. Image wipe, split screen, and highlight are all tools you're going to use a lot while you're grading. Here's our timeline, time code. This deals with proxies, I'm not using proxies. This will turn your entire grade on or off, okay? And then this icon is the enhanced viewer. So the color page has some different view options which are pretty handy. If you hit this, it gives you a larger display but keeps all of your grading tools down here on the bottom. You can also hit option F to get to the same mode. For example, I can click this to take it back or I'm just gonna hit option F. If I hit command F, it goes to full screen like normal. And then if I hit shift F, it goes to another type of screen which gives me access to some of my tools but not all of my grading tools, okay? So Option F for the Enhanced Viewer Default, Command F for Full Screen, and Shift F for that view. And we have other tools down here that we'll talk about later. Normal play controls here, etc. Now over here on the right, this is called the Node Tree. And this is gonna be your best friend, and if it looks confusing, it's gonna make complete sense. But in a nutshell, you can create separate nodes and label them and designate them for a specific purpose, which gives you a lot more control over your color grading. So as you might guess, this node controls my exposure. So as I adjust the exposure of a clip, I'll have this node selected and all of those changes will be right here. So this gives me very granular control. Again, it's all gonna make sense when we get to this in the training. Then we've got our clips here again, which we can turn off and on, or we can specify what we wanna see. For example, let's say you graded your film and you wanted to see any clips that hadn't been graded at all. You could choose that from the menu. Okay, now on the bottom lower left, this area represents your primary color grading tools, okay? And you can access a lot here from camera raw data to your primary color wheels to HDR wheels, etc. Because remember, we're grading in DaVinci Wide Gamut, so we have HDR tools even though our monitoring is Rec. 709. So again, all of this will make sense very soon. This middle area holds our secondary grading tools. For example, like on this shot, this node here uses a secondary grading tool. The default for this shot had the grass way too neon green for me once I got this stuff looking right. So I used a secondary grading tool to carve that off, and there we go. It also has the new color slice tool, which is new for DaVinci Resolve 19. Very, very cool tool. So you're gonna love these tools once you realize what you can use them for. They will do wonders for your footage. So that's secondary grading tools. And then over here on the right, it defaults to keyframes, but for me, the most important part of this is my scopes. And scopes are amazing. Once you understand how they work and what they can do for you, you will use them all the time. So that's the very basic walkthrough of the color page. Hey, if you like this training, you should check out my online film school, Write and Direct, writedirect.co. Because I'm a dreamer like you, and I'm a filmmaker. 
And I did the normal thing. I went to Los Angeles and I went to film school with all these dreams. And I spent a lot of money and I learned a lot, but here's the problem, the challenge. When you graduate from film school, you realize that the entertainment industry, that Hollywood doesn't care about your degree, they don't care about your thesis film, they don't care about any of that. What do they care about? They care about what you can do, what you know, what you've done. So if you're an aspiring director, after film school, the only way forward is to begin directing your own films, but it's on your dime. And if you're not prepared for that, it can set you back by years. And so the goal of Write and Direct is to take what I learned in school, of course, but what I've learned since then, working on studio and independent films, I take all that and I teach you the craft in a very hands-on, self-paced way. You learn the craft, but you save a ton of money so that you can buy the gear you need and start making movies much faster than traditional education routes. I highly recommend you check it out. If you have questions, go to my site, writedirect.co. You can use the contact form on the site. Those go directly to me. You can also schedule a call and we can answer questions on the phone. All right, writedirect.co, I hope to see you there. And if not there, I'll see you on the channel very soon.